Have you ever wanted to fall out of a moving plane unknowing if your parachute actually was going to support you by actually popping out a parachute or in fact doing nothing at all? I mean, probably not in real life, but in the game Panic in the Air by Exot Games, you and up to nine other players will basically be panicking in the air. You're going to be getting a set of cards in your hand, you're going to be then placing cards in front of you, or giving cards to your opponents face down until the deck runs out and the inevitable end card comes, which is this rip card here. If by that point in time you have not chosen to pull your parachute, then you're simply going to fall to your inevitable demise. However, if you manage to pull the ripcord in time before that card is drawn, you still might fall to your inevitable demise. Now, you'll be checking to see these click clack cards in your hand and determine if you have at least the even numbers as opposed to the odd numbers of click clacks. And if you do have even, you're safe. If not, then unfortunately that parachute's just not going to open. Can you gather the most points while falling through the air and also have your parachute be uh, unscathed by your opponents and potentially even yourself? Well, we'll find out down below as I explain the setup for the game Panic in the Air. I'll give you a brief description of the gameplay and then we'll come up and discuss the game, this crazy party game of falling out of an airplane. Uh, why you'd want to do it in real life, I don't know, but th the game sounds like it could be good. So let's begin our descent with Panic in the Air. Now to set up the game, it's pretty simple. You're gonna get a deck of cards that all do different things, but mainly it's going to be points and click clacks. Click clacks are the things that you're hoping will facilitate you opening your parachute. And then the points basically simulate you going down farther into the air, scoring you more points because you're waiting to the last second to pull, which can generate you more points. And then of course the famous rip card, RIP, rest in pieces, because if you draw this card, and you have not pulled in your parachute, you're in trouble, along with anybody else who hasn't pull in, pull in, pulled, pulled their parachute as well. Now, to begin the game, it's pretty simple. Go ahead and start with three 500-point cards, the rip card, shuffle this deck, and then deal out one, two, three, four, five, six random cards. Take these cards, the rip and the three 500s, and shuffle them up. And after you're done shuffling them up, to make sure you don't know where that scary little rip card is, go ahead and place it to form the bottom of the playing deck. Take the rest of the deck, make sure it's also pretty good and shuffled, and place that deck right on top of that first deck you made. Then that's pretty much the entire thing you need to do with the setup for the deck. The last thing you need to do is set up players' hands, and that will be determined based on the number of players in the game. If you're playing the game from two to six players, you'll deal out six cards to each player, and if you're playing with more than six players, everybody will get three cards, but to just simulate a very basic game, we would go ahead and give out every single player six cards, and we'll do a three-player scenario for the game Panic in the Air. Of course, it comes with this little handy-dandy reference chart, which tells you what the cards do. And it will also give you this rule book here, which is going to tell you how to play the game. It's rather simple though, and I'm going to explain it down below, because we've already finished setting up the game entirely for these three wonderful, uh, ch ch daring, daring men and women that are going to attempt to soar throughout the sky. So let's go ahead and take it just down below. I will show you how the game is played, what you can do with your two actions that you'll be taking each turn, and whether or not you're going to win the game based on how far you fall, and whether or not your click clacks work out to your advantage. Here is a three-player game of Panic in the Air. Now these are actually each player's hand, separate from each other player, given these six cards for each player. The only reason I separated it like this is so you can see each of the different cards, their values, and what they can do in the game. I've also separated it up like this as opposed to sliding it to the side because it's easier to see the numbers and whatnot because all of them are at the top of the cards here. Regardless though, these cards are only for your eyes and no one else should be looking at these cards. The only other thing you need to know is that there's going to be a space in front of each player. That's where they're going to be placing the cards for their deck as well as where they can place on their opponent's stacks when they choose to if they'd like based on the cards in their hand. Now, on your turn, we'll go ahead and just select the first player here. The last person who went skydiving, fell off a plane, or the last person to help build a parachute. I don't know, you can decide for yourself. But let's go ahead and start with this player here. And on your turn, you can either do one of two things up to two times. So you get two actions. Action number one could be to draw a card from this deck and put it in your hand. And action number two could be to play a card. You could play a card in your area or in one of your opponent's areas. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, let's go ahead and talk about the cards in the game. Well, first of all, you have these number cards, and these number cards are worth victory points in your pool at the end of the game, provided you don't fall, crash, and burn. 
The other more prominent card is going to be this Click Clack card. And if in your stack you have not crashed and burned due to drawing the Rip card, you will check at the end of the game to see if you have a positive number of Click Clack cards in your deck. If you do, you'll tally up your points and you will see who wins the game. However, if you have an odd number of Click Clacks in your deck, you're going to not be able to pull your Karo Shoot open and you will not count your points because you will lose the game. So it's possible for everyone in this game to lose. There's some solo cards that will prevent players from doing actions against you. Cards like Wind that will move cards from one player to another. Cards like Risk that will let you steal two cards from another player's hand, or in fact draw two cards from a player's deck. And those are pretty much the main cards in the game. If you want to look, you can actually see what all the cards do. It'll tell you here on this handy dandy little sheet. So we'll go ahead and start the game. We'll go ahead and play a 300 on this player, and he'll, he or she will also choose to play another 300 card. That means 600 points at the end of the game here. And if they have no click clack cards, I believe they're also okay in this game as well. If you have none or you have an even number. So right now they are safe and they've got 600 wonderful points in their deck. Uh, they are now done because they played their two actions. They played and played. Then it will go to the next player in clockwise order, which if we look at this way, or if we look at um, this way or whatever, this player is going to be the one to go next. And perhaps they're going to go ahead and take this click clack card and play it on this player here. And that's one of their actions, and maybe their next action is to take this 200 and place it here as well. Passing to the next player, this player is going to go ahead and play a 300 and perhaps play a click clack on this player as well. Over here, this player will draw a card as one of their actions, ooh, and play a card as one of their actions. Try and remember when players play cards on you because they may or may not be click clacks, which may or may not mess up your strategy by trying to get those even or even in fact no click clacks. So instead maybe if he didn't want to play this 300 and he thought for sure that this was a click clack, he could play this win card. So instead of that action, I'll play this win card. Win cards are going to rotate the top of everybody's deck to the next player. So you'll set them off to the side and then you're going to go ahead and place them. That will change and orientate the cards that are on the top of your deck, which can eventually help you. And then you take this card that you played, which is an action card, and put it into the discard pile. The same is said for risk cards and solo cards. These will never go into your stacks. The only thing that's going to go into your stacks are the points and the click clack cards. The last thing you need to know about the game is when a player empties his or her hand by playing all of their cards in any of the player's decks. So we'll just go ahead and say they play this 100 and this one here. And these were, this was in the graveyard. It was like this. If this player has no cards on their turn or at any point has no cards, they can choose to pull their parachute. If they pull their parachute, they're safe. They can't be affected by the rip card at the bottom of the deck. However, they can still fall through their doom if they have a negative number of these click clack cards. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Eventually, everybody's going to choose to pull their parachute before this deck runs out. Or if the deck does run out and the rip card pops, anybody who hasn't pulled at that time is going to lose. The people who did not choose, uh, who did choose to pull, they're going to be done and they're going to go ahead and check their stacks. So in any case, we'll just go ahead and show a simulation of what an end game might look like. And then we'll show you what basically a winner would look like. So this and this just to give you guys a good idea so you have an understanding. Now, I, although I'm fairly certain you do already realize it, we'll put and take these, the rest of the cards, and we'll just say that this is what the game looked like at the end with each player's stack. What you're gonna do is you're gonna say, okay, did all these players use their parachutes? And they did, they did before the rip card came out, which is, I don't know, somewhere in the last 10 cards here, right there, we at the very top, which would be scary. So they're all safe. They're going to then go ahead and reveal their cards. So look, he's got all these points and he's got two click clacks, which means he's safe. So he can get out of his points. That's his total point value. Next player, one click clack. Ooh, he's got a lot of points. Oh, two click clacks. He's also safe. And then this player here, one click clack. Ah, he only has one odd number. He actually is going to be removed from the game. He's fallen to his doom. So we then look at these two players here. He's got, this guy's got about 1,100 points, and this character over here has 1,000 points. So, in fact, this player would be the winner of the game, having more points than this player here, even though both of them survived. So, congratulations, you fell the farthest and survived by pulling your parachute in time for Panic in the Air. Okay, let's come up. Falling to your death. Yes, quite a humorous concept and also potentially dark concept. So, 
This game is a family party game. <laughs> You're basically trying to play cards on each other and attempting to not get the negative or the, the odd number of clicks in your deck. You also want to make sure you pull before it's too late, so it has a bit of that press your luck aspect in it. It's also pretty random because you don't know what's in your deck at all times, especially when wind is happening, when you're playing with multiple players, and when people play multiple cards on your stack. You know what you put in, and you know what you put in other players' decks, and depending on how social the group is, will determine how much additional randomness there is. Can you be honest with other players and tell them what you've done to them? Which you're probably not going to do because realistically, you want everyone else to fall except for yourself. If you're the only one who survives and you have 100 points, you're the winner of the game. So in reality, you're trying to make this as random as humanly possible. And the stress of falling in Panic in the Air is definitely one that is intensified, especially with more players, because the crazy randomness ensues and players are always like, oh, did you do this or did you do that? Did you place a click clack here? Did you win yourself after putting something on your area to actually in fact give me a click clack and give yourself bonus points? Yes. Yes, I did. And that's the idea of the game. So there's gonna be people who like this game, definitely. If you like party games, if you like the crazy randomness of certain party games, uh, I guess Uno comes to mind because you never know what's gonna come into your hand, right? And you also like pushing your luck. Now there's not a huge amount of it, but it's the most important part of the game. You have to get out before it's too late. With more players, the deck runs out quicker before it gets to your turn. It's very likely you're not going to be able to pull your parachute if you still have cards in your hand. So drawing a card is gonna be more influential than if you have a three or a four player game because in a three or four player game you can't even imagine when your turn is going to come up next and whether or not you're going to have a discarded full set of cards from your hand and you can pull that parachute obviously there's a specific strategy that each player is going to have in their own mind as to how to enact there's a bunch of crazy people who are just going to simply cause chaos like the joker i suppose just throwing out click clacks everywhere they possibly can and trying to end their stack with as little points and as little cards as possible just hoping to make sure everyone else falls in the process that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's one of those games where you're gonna probably know if you like this game just based on the sounds of it. For me, it's a lot of fun as a party game. I like playing this with a lot of players. It's not a game I necessarily play three, two, three, or even four players as much, but when you get a bunch of players throwing cards around together, enacting that social aspect of the game, as well as, of course, you do feel exactly what the theme is pushing you to feel. You feel like you don't know if that parachute is going to pull. You don't know for a fact if you're gonna be able to play all the cards in your hand if you like to push on a little too much, and you have to be very careful about that. And at the end of the day, you're gonna flip over your cards and hopefully you made all the right decisions you possibly could based on the amount of luck there possibly is in this game and randomness that assume, it occurs based on what players, what cards players play throughout it. So I don't know. Uh, for me, I enjoy this game quite a bit, but I'm gonna wanna play this game as one of those right in between games, especially with a lot of people and a lot of interactive people that have a, a lot of large personalities and emotions because this game draws out a lot of that. If you don't like random games, if you don't like slight push your luck games or small card games, it's probably not going to be for you. The theming is excellent, the artwork is a lot of fun and cartoonish, and yes, the game is pretty dark I suppose in theme but it doesn't really come out that way on you know you can consider it a cartoony thing especially even death how he's like floating down all the characters it's not dark artwork or anything like that it's it's what I would consider a dark family friendly nothing more than Animaniacs what I used to watch as a kid in the late or early 2000s I suppose for school where the people fall and they go splat and it's no non-blooded no blood or anything like that so yeah yeah Panic in the Air. It's a fun game, a good party game, and something I would recommend for large groups of people who like random, crazy, atmospheric party games that involve a lot of uh, social interaction. Anyway, check out the link down below if you want to pick up the game Panic in the Air. All right, I think you got it. Outro. Thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board slash card game party game review Panic in the Air. If you're interested in checking out more videos like this, hit down uh, in our little playlist here. You can go ahead and watch all our videos on YouTube. We create a lot of videos for review content, prototypes, and of course, we have our website, unfilteredgamer.com. If you want some giveaways, we do giveaways on there. We post some blog posts, and we have our famous Kickstarter list that has all of the new and latest, greatest games on Kickstarter. So you can just go ahead and hit that list as opposed to having to search them all up on your own on Kickstarter. And if you'd like, watch our live streams every 6.30 p.m. PST on Wednesday, and then every 
other Thursday, we do a live stream here on YouTube where we play games just like this one and interact with you as an audience and even give away games. We get sponsored quite often by different companies and give new Kickstarter games away as well as fully done um, promotional games that you can check out as well. A lot of fun. I do just greatly appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. And I look forward to seeing what you guys think about Panic in the Air down below in the comments based on whether you've played the game or in fact whether you've just seen my review and may be interested in picking it up. Regardless, thanks for watching and as always I look forward to not panicking. Never panic in the, in the air because I'm seriously afraid of heights. I can't stand having to fly to all these conventions because of my fear of heights, but regardless, th this one was a lot of fun. There's no way I'm gonna fall off the face of the- ah!